What's going on, everyone? Welcome to another edition of Back Your Play with Q. I'm your host, as always, Rich Quinones. We're going to switch it up a little bit, talk a little hoops. My guy, uh, Sean Mills from the Central Florida Force, president of basketball operations of the TBL and a little bit of the blue lines from Jersey. So we have to have that connection right there. Kind enough to join me for a couple of moments. Uh, Sean, the good to uh, touch base with you. How's everything coming along? Uh, season's right around the corner. Uh, everything's coming along. Uh, we just put a new coach in place. Uh, I'm excited about some of the players that's going to come in. We got guys that's working in our academy, getting ready for the season. Um, so yeah, I'm excited. Uh, you obviously you've got a hoops background. Uh, you know the sport. You played the sport. You're well traveled. Uh, just for the first time viewing audience on BI, BYP, maybe not familiar uh, with yourself jumping on board for the first time. Give a little background as to your experience when it comes to basketball. Uh, when it comes to my experience in basketball. Uh, was basically playing for a long time, played in Philadelphia, John Bartram High School, um, <clears throat> played at, in college, Gloucester County Junior College, played at University of Bridgeport, um, been a player for a long time, been a sports agent, uh, owned a sports academy, I uh, was the general manager of a basketball team, uh, Tri-State Admirals, oh, yeah. I was the president the next year, and now owner of the Central Florida Force and Tab Bess. Uh, the president of basketball operations here. Uh, you know, it's funny you mentioned Gloucester, obviously my backyard, you know, Burlington, Camden County, Atlantic County and whatnot. South Jersey is kind of a hotbed, right? If you think about it, over the last 15, 20, 25 plus years, uh, when it comes to um, high school uh, players, you know, guys going on to D1, D2, D3. What, what, what made you kind of from your playing days, want to make the transition to being an agent and now all of a sudden to uh, pretty much running a pro franchise? I just wanted to help players out. Um, I actually didn't have any aspirations in it. Um, just because of the person I am, I kind of got tabbed to play those type of roles. So um, while I was tabbed on playing those type of roles, I just decided to go in and get the credibility behind it. Um, and that's why I am today. Uh, what, you know, being an agent, what was that like? I mean, you got to deal with a lot of personalities. Uh, you know, you got to be able to kind of do what's best uh, for, uh, you know, the player, so to speak. What is that a background of yours? Did you take take uh, any up any business or marketing uh, in, in, in JUCO or in college to make you want to do that to maybe help and rep some players? Uh, no, I just jumped full in, um, went to went, went into study in the um, industry. Um, I took the FIBA license exam um, and just went full-fledged into it. So I didn't have that background, but I always was a person that'd be a third party and, you know, push this person to that person and be a middleman and a consultant. And I just yeah. decided to just cut the middleman out and just become the guy just uh, being a direct contact. Yeah, when it's buddy, buddy, right? The street turns, you say we're the middleman, but then when you got to step up in credibility, it's consultant. You know, you got to like, right? Think about it. Um, but it's paid off. It's paid off. Uh, all right. So listen, first year, you you guys are going to play in the Eastern Conference, correct? The Southeastern Conference, yes. Southeastern Conference. So uh, listen, I know it's tough, man. You got to wear many hats. Uh, we've got, uh, you know, tryouts coming up. They have um, a lot of, you know, there's a lot of time, but there's not a lot of time. And I've seen you've got some guys here. The kid Briggs from Memphis, uh, Rowan, the guard from Illinois. Uh, you got that kid, um, uh, Lorenzo Moore, I believe. I think he went to Holy Cross College. I did see a Willingboro uh, native, uh, a 6'2 guard. I seen this kid, Brent Jones. I went to St. Francis, did a little background on him from Brooklyn, New York. Are you guys planning to go more guard heavy? Uh, because if you look at some of the regions in the TBL, a lot of the Midwest, Midwest and even out West, they got a lot of bigs, but your conference is, is really kind of predicated on guard play. Is that kind of the idea? The, that is the kind of idea. I mean, we want guards that's leaders, but we're more going to be, I, I, the vision I have is for us to be more wing heavy um, instead of actually the smaller guards. Um, we just want to make sure all our smaller guards are able to really shoot the ball. Yeah. Uh, but, Man, I, the coach has the same vision I have on because I was really going to be the person that was going to take the helm of the head coaching. Um, due to all the things that I have going on, oh, I don't have the time to, uh, you know, to, to devote to just being a coach. His coaching takes a lot of hours um, that I just don't have right now. So um, 
me hiring this coach was great. The coach has a lot, a lot of experience, um, a lot of good contacts, has the goal of um, pushing our players on to the next level, whatever he can do. If he got to pick up the phone and call his uh, extensive contacts, then he will, um, just to help these players get to the next level. And that's what I liked about him. Um, but yeah, man, well, our wings are going to be able to do everything too. Uh, grab the rebound, put the ball on the floor, make some decisions, uh, shoot the ball, and play the, you know, moderate, moderate basketball what it is now. Yeah. It's not the same game it was before. Well, yeah, to, right, depending upon who you ask, too, when you think about it. I mean, everyone in the NBA right now is lighting up. It, it's almost as though back in the day, uh, guys hitting 30, 40 home runs or a running back going for 1,000 yards. Now, all of a sudden, you blink 40, 45 points, 60 points. Uh, you know, you look at the Joker, you look at Luca, you know, you look at what LeBron's doing at his advanced age. You saw Mitchell the other night. So it is, I, I, I've realized this though with, and again, it's apples and oranges doing games uh, with the ABA was more of an open and, and this is no disrespect to that league. A lot of it sometimes was more of a, almost like a glorified get up and down the floor, so to speak. Right. And plus you had the four pointers. If you stole it in the backcourt TBL, a lot more structure, heavy guard play, sharpshooters, a ton of athleticism. Um, have you kind of looked around the league and, 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 and kind of scouting report, seeing what kind of rosters uh, or even in the past, just to kind of see the flow of the offenses, how the league is kind of structured from that standpoint, or your mindset is look, we want the wings, you know, the wing play, the guard play. Our offense is going to be our offense. No, well, I looked at the landscape of the league. Um, being in the league, this is my third year involved in the league. Um, I've seen a lot of the teams. Um, so it's a it's a bit of both. Um, our style is our style. Uh, but, yeah, the, lands, the landscape of the league is tough. I mean, it's very, very competitive in the TBL. Uh, these are some of the best athletes in the world, you will say. Um, because if you didn't make the NBA, you didn't make um, the G League, yep. these guys are right there. Um, able to, some of those, these guys are able to go on the G League teams and be actually very productive. Um, so that's where you see it. Every player on every team can go overseas and be dynamite over there in, in, in a bunch of different countries. Yeah. Uh, you know, some countries is tougher than others, obviously. Um, but the bulk of, you know, the majority of the world, these guys can go in and be major, major factors on teams. Uh, so it's very tough. Every single team from the top to the bottom has a lot of, uh, has a lot of uh, complete players. Yep. And now you have the merger too, uh, with some games with uh, the uh, squads from Canada as well uh, over there, NBL Canada. So that's a little interesting. And again, couple of minutes, Sean Mills, president of basketball operations, Central Florida Force, jumping on BYP on a Thursday with Q. Rich Quinone is here. The other thing I was uh, thinking about this, uh, you know, leading up to this, and I know you and I have spoken for a while now over the past several months, um, is that the showcase, right? So you mentioned some of these guys have an opportunity to go and maybe uh, have a trial with the G League, or they come from really good backgrounds, whether it's D1, D2, they played overseas. I think the fact that you have another opportunity to get your feet wet, right? Get your reps in, so to speak, get the exposure with these games being broadcast and whatnot in good markets uh, like Florida as well, all over the place. I think it almost just enhances uh, the player's opportunity to maybe get plucked by a team overseas. It seems as though every time I check social media, man, Another player's getting signed. Another player's getting signed. Another player's getting signed. So to me, I look at the TBL as almost like a feeder league where it's right there with the G League. But the level, as we talked about, you can see some of these guys playing at a really high level. Like, I guess overall, you can't diminish the talent of the league, man. It's really strong. And I think it bodes well for some of these players because it only adds more credibility to them, their resumes. That's, 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 uh, that's a fact right there. Um, it is a hotbed for talent. Uh, these guys are go from playing all over the world, being MVPs and being all first team leagues. Um, it's, it's tough. It's, it's tough job for agents because <laughs> a lot of players here. Um, but I, I see the 
what I see is a really good option for players to stay home and try to make the G League too. Um, because you're playing at such a high caliber, a high clip that's competitive um, with the credibility behind the league that, man, it's, it's a reality. And in, in past, uh, you couldn't take, a, a, you know, from one of the minor leagues or yep. Yep. Um, other leagues that they consider uh, would be trying to be professional um, that you really didn't have any outlet to be on the G League. You could go overseas probably, uh, but you just had no shot at the G League. And I think the TBL is a league that you have a legitimate shot at the G League from this league. What was the thought? What was the mindset? Like, what made you decide, all right, you woke up one morning, you had your coffee, you got your workout and you're driving your car and you're like, you know what? Uh, I think I'm going to run a, a, a pro basketball team. I just wanted to give guys, like what you said, that extra opportunity to be, to put their talents on display. Uh, there's a number of talented athletes that probably slip through the cracks and not in a position that they want to. And us giving them that outlet, uh, me along with my uh, two partners that we, you know, decided to purchase this market. I uh, wanted to get these guys a legitimate opportunity to showcase their talent. That's a nice market down there. That's a good market. That's a hotbed for hoops, man. I mean, when you think about it, I mean, it's, it's, you got a lot of colleges, even when you go into Tampa, you go into Miami, Orlando, you've got some good players, man. Do you sense you'll have an opportunity to kind of keep homegrown talent or are you looking to maybe recruit from different states as I kind of alluded to, you know, Chicago is maybe the DCs, the New Yorks. A little of both uh, me being from all over, you know, from, being in many places, but there is a lot of talent down here. Um, we playing the long game this year is our first season. So it's just like um, our, our situation, we look at the big picture. So in a big picture, we'll be in a big stadium, um, have draw the best talent. So we just getting this year under our belt with some guys that's, I mean, their talent is really good. But I mean, I know that in, uh, Next year and, and beyond, we were just going to take it to a whole nother level. Um, I, I see it. I see the community turning like, who's the force? Who's the force? And once this season takes place where we can really educate everybody about who the Central Florida force is, what the TBL is and what we are about, um, I'm sure that we're going to, you know, turn this into a major, major hotbed for the TBL. And it kind of leads me, and you, someone answered it to the next question. How has this been received? I mean, obviously it's been well received, but is this, uh, as far as the community and whatnot and, and, and everyone getting aboard, I, I guess you have to have that first game right so you get a little bit of a sense, because you know this, been doing this before. There's always a little buzz and maybe the drop up. You got to find creative ways yes. to keep the fans coming back. I mean, at, at the end of the day, that's what it's all about. Yeah, it's, it's been well received from the players. So that's the thing. Um, but everyone doesn't know of the TBL, not yet. Right. Um, so that's where we come in at. And, uh, that's a lot of the things that we're doing is to educate the, you know, educate the businesses, the local community on the league, but all the players know about it. Uh, all the players are, you know, tr been trying to get into the TBL for a couple of years now, uh, that we spoke to and even guys that's coming right out of college is like, you know what, um, I'm going to try out for the TBL. So it has a major buzz along the players, but now we're just educating the community, letting them know, listen, uh, the local businesses that this is top level awareness. I mean, if we're showing our games in 145 different countries, um, you don't get any better than that. Outside of paying millions of dollars. Um, <laughs> Broadcasting rights. You know, yeah. Exactly. So it's like, you can support the dreams of these of these athletes right here, and it's realistic for even a small business, big business, everybody the same, um, to actually come in and contribute and, and be a supporter of this league because it's very positive, and it's um, something that's going to help uh, a young person, no matter they're a player, whether they are a coach, whether they are a statistician, or wherever they're going to be in a in the sports world. Uh, to give them that push to make it to the next level. No, no doubt. I mean, even last year for myself doing um, the team in PA and then pretty much uh, riding through with the Atlantic City Gambits uh, to broadcasting games, well, it, it's, it's, it, it's a win-win, right? There's great exposure 
on both sides. Again, uh, President of Basketball Operations, Sean Mills from the Central Florida Force, kind enough to join us on a Thursday edition of BYP with Q. Rich Quinone is here. Two more before I let you get out of here. Uh, combine's right around the uh, corner. Uh, what are you looking for uh, in some of these players? And what are you looking for in the players that you've invited out to uh, training camp? Uh, what we're looking for is uh, guys that have that's low maintenance, um, guys that just uh, professional guys um, have a positive outlook on on a situation. Like again, this is our first year, so everything is not going to be top of the notch. Um, you know, we're going to do what we can to you know to make these guys comfortable. And obviously, we got that type of uh, push from all of all of the business owners at um, Central Florida Force. We all have our own companies. Um, but we're just looking for guys that's gritty, guys that's want to, you know, they just want to make it to the next level. We're not looking for a guy that just has his whole plan to be a superstar right now. Right. Um, we're just not looking for that type of player. Not yet. In the future, maybe we could be looking for those type of players, guys that we want to have stay here all year long and represent the force. Um, but right now we're looking for talent, uh, mental toughness. We're looking for low maintenance person. And very coachable. That's just what it is. Um, uh, let me, uh, let me, uh, I don't, it's not that I'm going to test your uh, South Jersey knowledge, but I want to get your thoughts on son who in your mind, who is probably the top one or two players ever to come out of uh, South Jersey. Well, the best player that I saw from South, I mean, I'm from Philadelphia, but the best player that I personally seen in South Jersey was uh, the one white. I knew you were going to say that. That's what everyone um, <laughs> Uh, yeah, how about you remember uh, Greg Barr out of Camden? Yes. He averaged about 38 points a game. Um, uh, and then, uh, you know, in our backyard, well, I should say my backyard now, Atlantic City, uh, Willie Glass, AC. Uh, you know, Frank Turner is a great player for the Gambits, um, had a wonderful college career, still uh, doing very well, uh, played overseas. Um, what about in Philly? That's a different animal, man. It's a, it's a whole different. We can animal. talk about that for the next hour. <laughs> yes, uh, it's unlimited in Philadelphia. Um, unlimited, so much talent in the city of Philadelphia. It's one of the biggest cities in the world, so that's that's why that's like that. But like in South Jersey, the only, the reason why I say Dewan Wagner because of honestly, at first he was playing around the same time as me. Obviously, I'm older. Um, but when I first saw him, I wasn't impressed with him at first when I first saw him. But then once I seen him, it when I seen him live up in person and he was about to go to Memphis, I said, this guy's out of this world. Um, he just seen a game, the, the game that he was playing was different than the game that everybody else was playing. Yeah. Uh, he yeah. was playing at, I mean, he, he was playing at a level that was so high. He was so strong already. He was just, a, he just developed, he was a pro already. Yeah, which is crazy when you think about it. It's like watching those guys back in the day play at Rucker Park. He just knew yeah. they were at. Yeah, just he, at, yeah. That, that when I seen, I was like, oh, it, "This guy is just unbelievable." Yeah, like, and he was just—he wasn't even nowhere near at the peak that he could be that he could be at. But that guy, when you seen that, it was like, "Yo, this guy is all in the whole world." As a fan, do you gravitate more towards uh, college or the NBA or international ball? I gravitate more towards the NBA. I've always been an NBA guy. Um, because it's, you know, they, creativity lives a lot more in, in, in those, uh, atmospheres than it does in like college. It's more constrictive, um, with defenses is so tight and, um, you just don't get a chance to really open your game. I've always been a more of a creative type player, even though I'm not like a, like you just said, like a rugger park type guy, I've never been that type of player, but, um, my passing lends itself to be like, you know, creative. So you like today's, you like today's style a little more open as opposed to say like in the late eighties and the nineties, when half court offenses, you're going to ratchet it down aside from what the Celtics were doing in the Lakers and Showtime, Knicks, Miami, the Bulls, Indiana, my, you know, those types of defenses. I mean, I think today's game, I mean, think about it. You got the bigs, they're not parking their butt on the low block, man. They're beyond the three-point land. I mean, Elijah Wine just said the other day, why does uh, Embiid have to camp himself beyond the – but that's that's today's game, man. That's Today's that's game is, is 
I, I just see it as two different things. Today's game is just way different. But again, I always been an NBA guy. So even though those defenses was really tough, it still was it, it still was a little bit more more fun and more free than what college was though. Yeah. Um at that time. Now today's game, a whole different beast. You got these guys that's so athletic, uh, so fast. Uh some are very, very skilled, but it's just very different. Um I would not say it's better, but I would say it's just, you know, it's different. Um, guys before probably they 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 had higher basketball IQs than what the guys are playing with today. Um, because today's game is more with, with the analytics that came in, uh made the game a little bit more about science. Like it's just you take as me take more shots than the other team, um, more than likely you're gonna win a game. So it's like guys are just coming up, letting shots fly when, you know, it was a good possession, good possession, good possession, good possession. Let's make sure we get a good possession. And that's just not the case now. No. Uh, you can see games where it's about, I saw a game the other night um, where I saw about seven to eight straight uh, three-point shots. And I was just like, wow. Like these guys, and they wasn't even three-point shots off the swing. These was just a person coming down, shooting and three, ducking. coming down, shooting and down. YMCA on a Saturday. Yes, that's and, and that's what it was, and, and that could, could be a reason why these guys are scoring so many. I mean, he's scoring so many points, um, seventy points, sixty points, yeah. sixty points, and fifty. Like with all of the other numbers, like before, you know, you're gonna have a sixty point game. You might have two or three assists. These guys are sixty, ten. It, ten assists like those triple doubles are, yeah those stat lines are they're, they're not normal are, no 38 no, 20 and 10 normal. yeah 38 20 and 10 45 15 and 10 that's like once in a lifetime and you mentioned the scoring you know the other night then uh the nets and the sixers what was it like 136 133 i think a lot of that has to do when golden state was really getting up and down the floor right the whole knock was well they can be down 10, but they can get four straight possessions and knock down four straight three-pointers, and they take the lead, they punch in the gut, and that's pretty much it. I, I think a lot of it has to do with that type of style play where now everyone's a sharpshooter. Uh, they're living and dying by the three wares. Conversely, when you look at college, the most successful teams that win their conferences or have deep runs in March are the ones that have what? Guards. Point yes. guards, Right. It's always to guard play. The, the give, I don't care what team, even, you know, you go back to UNLV. They still, they had an assemblance of guard play, even though they had high flyers in, in the late 80s and the early 90s. Even the Houston teams of the 80s, they still had guard play. Yeah, they had guys that dunked all over the place. But give me a team that has a solid backcourt. That's the team that's going to make a run in college. NBA, it's a different animal, man. Yeah. You know? These guards aren't even looking to distribute. They're looking to score first. They're looking, they're they're looking to score first. And I mean, I, I mean, these guys, some of these guys, it's hard. It's really hard to stop them. Um, you know, with the rules today, how you know how the game is going, these guys, you can't really touch them. These guys are lightning fast. And they don't have the like they don't have the conscience. Like, you know, you shoot two or three bad shots, and you're like, uh, well, you probably shouldn't shoot again. You know what I mean? Or should be passing the ball these guys i mean they come up 15 straight times bad shots and they still have the confidence like they're on fire yeah. so it's really hard i mean it's really hard to guard some of these guys some of these guys are so talented it's like wow yeah no doubt somewhere somewhere russell westbrook's ears are ringing a little bit with just keep chucking and chucking and chucking and chuck yeah, so yeah, yeah. Philly, south jersey were you a were you a knicks fan or you were a sixers fan i'm a sixers fan all right what do you make of the sixers right now I like them. I like what the Sixers are doing right now. Um, uh, and B, Tobias Harris playing his role. Uh, James Harden is really doing some good things quietly. It's quiet. You know, he, he doesn't have the, it, it's like he's not even James Harden of old no more. <laughs> like his name doesn't come up on any list of That's a good thing. top guards, but it's, I mean, his numbers say different, yeah. but. Man, he just turned himself into a really, uh, a really strong point guard. So I, I definitely like our uh, chances. We got great role players. Um, we could, could, we could probably pick up somebody in a trade deadline that that could, you know, help us put us over the edge. top. Yeah, a yeah. little more depth here and there. Yeah, listen, I still Eastern Conference, Boston, Milwaukee, Sixers, 
the Nets, I mean, when they're engaged, I mean, obviously dealing with the Durant issue, but when Kyrie's on the floor, Simmons, when he's engaged, I can't really say much about my Knicks. Um, it is what it is. I get it. They're kind of in that purgatory, right? Because how did you have, how did you become a Knicks fan? I was born in New York. Oh, okay, okay. All right. Yeah. You see all that blue behind me? That's that's all <laughs> British, man. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. But see, my squad, um, you know, I was a uh, huge Pat uh, Patrick Hewing fan. Well, St. John's was my squad because I, I love Chrissy Mullins. That blue, yes, blue, yes, blue yes. That was my, back in the day, man. I mean, 85, 86, you know, uh, Bill Wellington, you know, blocking Earl the Pearl, Washington. That 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 was the heyday. But I love the Knicks because I love Bernard King. He was one of my guys. That was just, I just loved watching Bernard King. Then it was Mark Jackson. I was a Strickland guy, obviously Patrick. Then when Riley was head coach, I'm like, man, this is it. This is, I've been waiting for this. Like, here we go. And then of course, never get over the hump because of friggin' Michael Jordan or because my guy, Charles Smith got blocked 36 times or whatever mm -hmm. have you. And then the one year Jordan decides, let me step away. Let me try to uh, play baseball a little bit. Here we go. Wink, wink. They should have beat the, I believe to this day, they should have beat the Rockets in seven games in, in 93. 99 was a different animal. Uh, Latrell and Allen Houston carry that team. Patrick got hurt. San Antonio was a different animal. Um, you know, Avery Johnson to this day, I don't want to see that clown. They lost in five. I'm okay with that. 93 was their best shot to win it. And then I'll do you one better. 94, 95, they were actually better. And they just could never, they were a great team that never, can can get it done in a clutch they, that that's yeah. just that's it pains me to say that but they could never get it done when it needed to get done and 93 was their shot and i don't care that they, they were they were they were two very evenly matched teams though the, the knicks and houston at that time they were i mean that was as even as you can get guard I mean, play centers yeah. <laughs> but the difference is i think houston had a better bench and people will de don't debate me on that because when you look at some of the guys, you know Harper had a great series. He was he was the, uh, the twilight of his career, but he had some big shots. Uh, Starks was you know when Starks went cold, he went cold. But Houston, it's just the Mario Ellie's, the Robert or like those guys just. Uh, El yeah, Mario Ellie. Can he? See? he, he yeah, I don't, yeah, man. <laughs> he makes the big play. He he's the big. He makes the big play all the time. That's what clutch players do. You know, Ori, Kenny Smith. I mean, it's just, and Elijah Wan was Elijah Wan. And, um, you know, people forget too, man. He he went to the NBA Finals early on in his career with Houston when they lost to the yeah. Celtics. And he was a beast then. He just changed his, his game just grew. And that's probably why he can't stand today's NBA, right? Because- A lot of the older guys can't stand the NBA. I mean, I, honestly, I can look at it and see why I just, I work with the kids, so I see the talent. Uh, close up, so I could never discredit them because a lot of these kids they they putting in they putting in so much work, much no more work than what they used to put in in the past. Now, is it the right work? No, <laughs> um, but they are putting in work. They got great work work ethics. Like some of these guys are staying in the gym all day. Yeah, um, and a lot of them are coachable. We, um, it's just the internet kind of um, is. To me, in my opinion, the internet is kind of ruining some of the things because, like, it's true. With um, somebody came out with a video saying that the highlights um, are the problem, and that's true. Like, you have players who only watch highlights, so you don't get to see it, the chance to see the good, the bad. So you don't really learn how to play. Um, great but these kids are. I mean, the game is different. These guys are are going. These guys are a thousand miles an hour. Um, can't stop these guys. These guys are going. So I get the old guys. The old guys are just like everything. They, get, they want to see the same game that they play, yeah. and it's not yeah. the same. No, as they say, times are changing. Um, all right, brother, I appreciate a couple moments. Listen, if you wanted to pump uh, the uh, academy back there, social media, where everyone can follow Central Florida Force, have at it. All right, Central Florida Force, at Central Florida Force on Instagram, Facebook, and everything pure passion sports pure underscore passion underscore sports uh the academy we inherit we see we work with players from all over the country um we work them out uh we have 
everything here, shooting machine, Vertimax, uh, weight room. We work with youth players from starting at five years old all the way to pros. We even had a guy from Australia come here a few weeks ago. Wow. Um, so this is the place you want to be if you, you know, looking to break into your pro career, uh, get some good counsel, get some good work in, we can give you a evaluation um, that's going to be based on uh, the average pro. And it can line you up to wherever you want to go. Um, we can speak for you. We can be references for you. Uh, we can help market you. And that's it. Come to the academy. And for all of the uh, players, Central Florida Force, we got our last tryout of the season, February 11th. Uh, register for that, and I hope to see you there. All right. Well, listen, I appreciate you jumping on back your play for a couple moments. I wish you the best of luck. You know I'm getting down there. We already talked about that. Timing is everything in life, and I look forward to it. But uh, I appreciate it, man. Good stuff with the combine. Good stuff with training camp. We'll talk before the season starts again, but certainly uh, thank you for a couple moments on this Thursday. All right, great, man. Rich, good, good work that you've been doing out there for both the Pennsylvania team and Atlantic City team, both exciting teams. Uh, looking forward to watching them next season also. Um, great work. I appreciate it. I just got to get rid of this, this this cold area in Jersey. That's what I'm saying. I'm, I'm telling you, <laughs> I, 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 don't, I, I love those guys to death, man. And, and the gamuts, they're my guys, but they, they know. Time is, time is of the essence, man. This cold weather, it's not good. So um, we will be making that trek down to Florida, but uh, that's very humbling. I appreciate the kind words. And uh, thanks again, Sean. Appreciate you, pal. No problem, man. Have a good one. You too, brother.